स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Let's talk about cosets. So, given a group G and H a subgroup of G, can define for each G in G H times G. As this sim notation suggests. This is the product h times g as h runs over all the elements of h. This is called a right coset of h. And you can similarly define g times h to be g h where h belongs to h. This is called a left coset of h. So basically you've taken this subgroup H and then you've multiplied all its elements on the right by an element G of G. Let's look at an example of this thing, a very natural example that comes up in number theory. Take G to be Z, the group of integers under addition and take H to be the subgroup of say multiples of five. Then uh, if I want to write so let's take any element of uh, G, let's take the element 3. So I want to write the coset H times uh, 3, but since the group structure here is given by addition, I'll write H plus 3. And this is equal to uh, H plus 3, where H belongs to 5Z. This is also the same as 5K plus 3, where K is in Z. So this is just the set of all integers which leave a remainder 3 when divided by 5. And this is also the same as 3 plus h because in this uh, group of integers under addition, uh, a plus b is b plus a. So addition is commutative. So whether I write 3 plus h here or h plus 3, it's all the same. This is what's called an abelian group. Okay, let's look at a slightly more uh, interesting example. Uh, oops. Okay, so let's take G to be the group SN, the symmetric group on N letters, and let's take H to be the subgroup of those permutations in SN which take N to N. All the permutations in SN which take 1 to N, now uh, N to N. Now these permutations, they will also take, since they take N to N, any number strictly less than N must go to another number strictly less than N because N is already taken. So this group can be thought of as also permutations of the numbers 1 to n minus 1. So this is isomorphic to Sn minus 1. So this is a way of thinking of Sn minus 1 as a subgroup of Sn. And now let's ask ourselves what are the cosets of H in G. So here's uh, a nice observation. So suppose I take some element W0 in Sn. Okay, so take some element. And uh, let's look at W0H. So this is equal to, uh, by definition, W0U, where U of N is equal to N. Okay, so I ask, where does W0U take N itself? W0U takes N to, uh, well, it takes it to, U takes N to N, so it takes it to W0N. So I claim that W0H is a set of all W in Sn such that W of N is equal to W0 of N. And we've already seen uh, one way that uh, each element of W0H has this property. And to see the converse, uh, we just need to say that suppose 
um, w of n is equal to w0 of n okay then we ask is uh, w of the form w0 times u where u takes n to n and so we just have to find this element u and if you think about it a bit um, you will probably come up with the same uh, answer as me which is that you take u to be so I want uh, I want let's just do some rough work here I want w0 u to be w so I want u to be w uh, w0 inverse times w Okay, so take u to be w0 inverse times w, then what is u of n? u of n is w0 inverse w of n, but we know that w of n is w0 of n. But that's just n. So that shows that the coset W0H is just a set of all elements of uh, Sn which take n to W0n. So the upshot of this is that um, H, uh, which is isomorphic to Sn minus 1, has n left cosets in Sn. They are given by Cn is equal to W in Sn such that W of n is equal to, no, not Cn, I want to say Ci, where W of n is equal to I for I equals 1 to n. And what we have is Sn is a disjoint union of i goes from 1 to n of ci okay so what we are going to be interested in now is um, how a group decomposes into cosets so firstly what is the size of a coset Okay, so what is the cardinality of H times G? So G is some group, little g is an element of G and H is a subgroup. I claim that this is the same as the cardinality of H because you have a bijection from H to, I'll call it RG, right multiplication by G from H to HG. This is the function which takes H to h times g is a bijection. Why is this a bijection? Well, it's a bijection because its inverse is given by right multiplication by just g inverse x goes to x g inverse. You can check that. So if you have an element in h g, you multiply it by g inverse you'll end up with an element in H. So each coset has the same cardinality as the uh, group itself, as, a, as the subgroup itself. Okay. Now, a good way to understand these cosets is to use what we already learned about group actions. In fact, these cosets are orbits of a certain group action. How do we do that? Set up H acts on G. Well, there are two ways of doing this. Uh, let's start with the simpler one. H acts on G by just saying H dot G is H multiplied by G. Okay, and then the cosets are, uh, the orbits for these actions are uh, precisely, uh, right? What is the definition of orbit? H G, H dot G, H and H which is just hg. So right cosets are uh, orbits of the action of x h by left multiplication on g. 
So this is one action. There's another action of H on G. H dot G is G H inverse. Um, I'd mentioned this uh, uh, action when I defined a group acting on itself. Uh, there were two actions, the left multiplication action and the right multiplication action. This is the right multiplication action. Somehow, because we are writing H on the left here, we need to put an inverse there to make this work. And the orbits of this are what? Well, this is G times H inverse where H is in H. But of course, H inverse is in H if and only if H itself is in H. So this is the same as G H. So the left, uh, the right cosets and the left cosets are orbits for the action of H on itself by left multiplication and right multiplication respectively. So our usual theory of group action says that G is a disjoint union of H orbits. So G is a disjoint union of left cosets or right cosets. And each of these cosets has the same size, namely the cardinality of H. So how many cosets are there? So let's use some notation here. So I'll write G mod H to denote the set of left cosets of H. And I'll sort of mirrored this G mod H but written the opposite so H backslash G is what it becomes but usually you know G mod H on the left set of right cosets so what we know is that G is a union of its uh, left cosets a disjoint union of its left cosets G and each left coset has the same size as G itself, as H itself. So G is, the cardinality of G is the number of left cosets times the size of each left coset, which is the size of H itself.